Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Welcome to this act of worship on Passion Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Lent, when our eyes are turned once more to the cross of Christ. We recall that Christ himself carried up our sins in his body to the tree, so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, we have been healed. Let us confess our sins. O God, you know my foolishness, and my sins are not hidden from you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let not the flood overwhelm me, nor the depths swallow me up. Let not the pit shut its mouth upon me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Hear me, O Lord, as your loving kindness is good. Turn to me, as your compassion is great. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The almighty and merciful Lord, grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join now in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. collect for today. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. 
The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Good morning. Some of you may still be eating your breakfast. I'm using this toast as a visual aid, which I'll come back to later. We've just heard a short reading from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah. I think that it reads like the trailer for the next episode in a great blockbuster film. In case you don't know the history, Jeremiah was a prophet that lived about 600 years before Jesus was born. His ministry covered the whole of the period when the temple in the city of Jerusalem was destroyed and the remnant of the Judahites and the Israelites had fled into exile. The book of Jeremiah functioned as an explanation of why they'd been exiled and as something from which lessons to, should be learned. Throughout the Old Testament, we see examples of how the people of God had rejected him when it suited them. Disaster always occurred and the people ended up turning back to God for forgiveness. This time, God wanted to do things differently. He's offering forgiveness for their sins, not just in the sense of saying, I forgive you, but giving you a full pardon. He wanted to wipe the slate clean so that they could have a fresh start. He is offering this to everyone, not just the select few or those that feel part of the chosen. In return, he wants them to receive his law within themselves, to write it on their hearts. This reading talks about being transformed in our inmost being by God's laws. This happened a long time ago after a period of monumental change. Doesn't that sound familiar? God did not give up on his people, but gave them a new opportunity to be transformed through the forgiveness of their sins. Some of us may be wearing jewellery with a heart inscribed with a name. Earlier in the Old Testament, they were encouraged to wear portions of scripture on the head and their arm to remind themselves that they should live within God's laws. But here God is saying, believe in me rather than just wear the scriptures for others to see. So things were changing then as they are now, and we have choices to make. Some choices in life are easier than others. My choice about what to put on my toast, jam, marmalade or honey, is fairly straightforward. Some are more difficult. What about replacing your car? Particularly at the moment with all the issues surrounding climate change, what can you do if you simply can't afford a new electric car? For those at school, many have decisions to make about the future, including whether to retake a year, what to study, look for a job or taking a gap year to decide what to do next. We have choices as we return to, our, to church, our workplaces and hopefully the hairdressers. We also face choices regarding our faith. Over the last year, many of us have made new routines. During this second half of Lent, we have an opportunity to assess what habits we want to take forward in our faith journey. Things that will help us to keep the word of God close to our heart. What has worked well and kept us inspired, but also to consider what haven't we missed and why?
said Judas to Mary, now what will you do with your ointment so rich and so rare? I'll pour it all over the feet of my Lord, and I'll wipe it away with my hair, she said. I'll wipe it away with my hair. Oh Mary, oh Mary, oh think of the poor This ointment it could have been sold And think of the blankets and think of the bread You could buy with the silver and gold He said, you could buy with the silver and gold Tomorrow, tomorrow, I'll think of the poor. Tomorrow, she said, not today. For dearer than all of the poor of the world is my love who is going away, she said. My love who is going away. Said Jesus to Mary, your love is so deep, today you may do as you will. Tomorrow you say, I am going away, but my body I leave with you still, he said. My body I leave with you still. The poor of the world are my body, he said. To the end of the world they shall be. The bread and the blankets you give to the poor, you will find you have given to me, he said. You will find you have given to me. My body will hang on the cross of the world Tomorrow, he said, and today And Martha and Mary will find me again And wash all my sorrow away, he said And wash all my sorrow A reading from the Gospel of St. John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethesda in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die.
In the reading from John, we've moved on 600 years to the life of Jesus. In this reading, Jesus says that his time has now come. There have been previous moments when he said, my time has not yet come. Remember the wedding at Cana when he turned water into wine. He said to his mother, why did you ask me when my time has not yet come? There is such a powerful image about a grain of wheat dying in order to bear much fruit. This online faith community, as well as the face-to-face -face community, is part of the fruit of Jesus' death because we show forth Jesus' love to the world. We hear in the Gospel reading how Jesus demonstrates his human nature by battling with his human instincts, self-preservation and avoiding pain and conflict. But he trusts God and follows what needs to be done willingly. As soon as he's made his decision, God affirms him. Are we like those in the crowd who have ears to hear? and hear the bird song now. Back at the beginning of Lent, I suggested planting a seed and watching it grow. Well, here are a few shoots that have grown in our garden or on the windowsill. I'm sure that you have seen many others in the ground. I want to continue encouraging us to sow the good news of the gospel to those around us. We should also be on the lookout for signs of new growth. New shoots. In our road to recovery, what have we learned about ourselves over the last year? About the resilience of our faith and where we get our strength from? How will we rebuild our lost confidence in the world around us? How, going forward in our faith, will we support the life and ministry of St Thomas's to the city of Salisbury and its community? That sense of God's peace and presence as we enter the building will remain. We know that over centuries many have gathered in this place in the building of St Thomas's and experienced similar emotions after times of national and international crises. But times move on. There are people like me who have only known St Thomas's online or may have started watching church during lockdown and are really unsure about getting involved. Traditions and rituals, which are often steeped in history, may feel more or less important now. Since moving to this house, I've had to think long and hard about the garden. What should stay? What needs to be pruned? What would I add? And also, what needed to be removed? It's still a work in progress, but one thing that I did was to take cuttings of the plants that I wanted to remove so that if I want to, I can put them back again. As we go forward, we should consider what remains valuable and what may need to be sacrificed in order to show God's love to those around us in an accessible and inclusive way. There is so much in the world that we don't understand and I continue to ask like an inquiring child, why God, why? But these words from 1 Corinthians 13 remind me that now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. As we make our choices, we should always remember that whatever we decide, God loves us. In our two readings today, God has shown how much he continues to love and care for us. Amen.
in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord, hear us and help us. During the challenges and chances of Lent, let us join with all Christian denominations in the united purpose of fulfilling the mission of the Church. Help us to strengthen our fellowship in faith. We remember that in the wilderness, Jesus found strength through prayer. The night has passed. The day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Lord, may our nation's leaders remain both honest and constant in a world of turbulent change. Guide them to make the right choices to honour their responsibilities and to use their privileges for the benefit of all. We remember that in the wilderness, Jesus remained a rock among the shifting sands. The night has passed, the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. In our daily thoughts, let us pray for the people whose lives we share in our homes and in our city. Let us not forget to give thanks when our fortunes are good and to support those near and far who are less fortunate. We remember that in the wilderness Jesus remained alone in order to be closer to us. The night has passed. The day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mine. Lord, we ask that you help us to bring comfort and healing to those who are ill and to give them and their carers hope in their troubles. Help us to make much of little and with what we have to help others who suffer, the lonely, the hungry, and the oppressed. We remember that in the wilderness Jesus fasted. The night has passed. The day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. We commemorate the departed. May those who grieve for them find solace in the words of Rabindranath Tagore. Death is not extinguishing the light. It is putting out the lamp because the dawn has come. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We remember that in the wilderness Jesus faced his death at Calvary. The night has passed. The day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. notices for this morning and first I shall remind you that there is still plenty of time to donate to our Lent appeal in aid of Salisbury Hospice. Details are on the website. 
Also, we invite anyone worshipping with us to consider making a donation to the ministry of this church. There is a QR code on this YouTube recording and a big green button on the website to make this simple. The St Thomas's Holy Week and Easter programme is now available on the website. The main thing to say is that there will be 1015 online services on both Palm Sunday and Easter Day uh, as normal. So there's no break in the normal pattern. The church itself will be open for services at various times, including three on Good Friday uh, in the afternoon and Evensong on Easter Day. There will also be Zoom services, including one for Maundy Thursday. Details from the office and as always on our website. Christ crucified, draw you to himself, to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.